Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Krause. Can you believe it, Ian? It's time for yet another Bumblecast. We have so many, many questions, this time just coming from our patrons over at patreon.com slash Bumblecast and our YouTube, some subscribers, some from our live show. That's right. We have so many questions. We can't even get to the Kofi patrons just yet. That will be coming later this week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, it'll be coming next week because we have so many. We, we we can't do it. We can't do ah. it, guys. You guys are amazing. Okay. We, then. Yeah, yeah. We have like, we we got like 48 questions from just these two so let's go ahead and get into him let's not waste any time this one is from akbar 260p i was wondering how would you have brought mecha sonic back if you'd had the chance did you have any ideas for him would you have tried to bring him into the modern era or would you have left him in the classic era and treated him like metal knuckles a cool inclusion but with no real character traits uh, which mecha are we talking about are we talking about mecha one the, uh, the they're quote, talking quote, about quote, Silver Sonic. The initial setup talked about uh, Scrapnik Island, so I believe they're referring okay, so, officially to or referring to the Sonic Three and Knuckles okay. version. All right, so Mecha Two. Yeah. Uh, in my mind, he was destroyed. Like if you once you play through Knuckles' campaign, he just shatters. He is he goes kablooey. So it never occurred to me to bring him back. Yeah. Well, uh, what what if what I, if what if it did though? Well, if I were to focus on bringing back a mecha, I'd bring three mecha three from uh, Adventure One, right? Okay, and do yeah. something with him. Uh huh. You know, the the mechas were one and two were destroyed, as far as I knew. So with three, I think we've covered this before in the show. If Metal Sonic is supposed to, you know, be indicative of Sonic's speed and agility, and uh, you know his sleekness just how cool and swift he is. Mecha I see is being the overwhelming power. You know, if Eggman can't recreate Sonic speed one for one, he'll just recreate the power and overwhelm through sheer force. And instead of being like a ballistic missile with a vendetta, like metal Mecha three would be this like almost nemesis out of resident evil unstoppable behemoth type of thing. You know, he gets up to speed and that's kind of like a train coming at you. There's no finesse, but when you can level a city block with just by running into it, who needs finesse? <laughs> finesse is overrated. Can confirm. So that would be my initial approach, but who knows how it would ever go if we actually got the chance. Mm. Alrighty. Well, here's one from Alpha Mono or you can, so we all know that Speedy and, by extension, the Battlebird Armada hold disdain towards those who use unnatural methods to fly, like tails. With that in mind, how do you think they'd react to characters like Cream, Bunny, Silver, or Kit? Same thing. You know, they're flying, and that's not natural. To the Gulag with them. How dare they fly? Rude. I mean, Silver's the worst off. He doesn't even have any kind of outside... Sorry, he just thinks to fly? That's ch cheating! That's absolutely cheating. Down with the weird haired hedgehog. Yeah. Well, well, Tails and Cream's method of flying is natural to them. It's not winged, and therefore it is wrong, Kyle. Wrong to the gulag. Yeah. Battlebirds are kind of dumb. Oh, they're super <laughs> dumb. And that's why we love them. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Here's one from Andrew G. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you recently stated that Thunderbolt of Chinchilla was a robot. Did you mean completely like the auto automatons or were you referring to the robotic suit she piloted? We already knew was a suit or am I missing something? I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, maybe I misspoke, but she was a cyborg like the rest of the egg bosses. Yes. Yeah, she like had like a bomb built in, right? To keep her in line or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. But that, that's just a bomb. The bomb. Bombs can go into living things. <laughs> She she didn't need a bomb, to be fair. She would have been loyal regardless. <laughs> but, you know, just true enough. Just true in, enough. But just in case, you know, Eggman can't play favorites. No. <laughs> All right. Here's a question from Anonymous. Congratulations. You won the Sega lottery and now Sega sends both of you on vacation. Each one of you may choose one location slash zone slash city across all of Sonic Media as a destination and one character to show you around. 
So where are you going and who will be your tour guide? I'll go to Ice Paradise out of which advanced game was that? Chili. Two? Three? Because it'd be nice and brisk, but also, you know, well built up. So there's places to go and warm up and things to do and places to shop and whatnot. It looks just like a nice resort place to be. Mm-hmm. In that regard, I would imagine Amy would be the one to show me around. If anyone's going to know, you know, where to go and have a good time and be chill about it, it's going to be her. <laughs> really? Is that what you, th- you think so? Yeah. Oh, all right. I'll go to what's it called from from boom the main area main village is it hedgehog it hedgehog, village? hedgehog village from boom yeah i think so okay yeah i think that's what it's called yeah i'll go there and have stick show me all the weird secrets <laughs> as if she would trust you with those secrets uh, she wouldn't trust me with anything and i don't blame her i don't trust me either you an outsider coming in wanting to know all the secrets sure that ain't suspicious at all nope not in the slightest (laughs) yeah yeah i'd still want to know though all right here's one from aster disaster i shall use my first bumblecast question to deliver some 2009 internet legacy mixed with our lovable blue hedgehog what homestuck at classpect class and aspect would you see the team sonic plus amy having I am so sorry. I know nothing about Homestuck. Like, uh, I, I mean, I thought Homestuck. Nothing, nothing. I thought Homestuck was what we all were in 2020. Bada bum bum. <laughs> I I really don't know much about Homestuck either. I'm sorry to say, so I couldn't help you on this question. This is yeah. This is a little bit over our heads. 2009 is like late for me. I was an adult by then, so I didn't have time to be on the internet at that point <laughs> except all i did I really but i that... just didn't follow that <laughs> all i really know is that you know it started to get big outside of its own circles i'm like oh what is this and somebody said yeah it's incredibly dense you'll have to read for days just to get caught up I'm like yeah no thanks and that is my experience with homestuck yes yes for the curious for those wondering what homestuck is it's like a, it's a very long web comic with a lot of lore and it got in increasingly larger and larger and larger as time has got on and i think it's ended now but i think it ended a while ago but it, it, it's a lot anyway here's one from oz jam twists and stories seem to be a challenge to get right especially in plan- planting the seed for the audience to figure it out one of my favorite twists is the dobby reveal in my hero academia where it is revealed that he is spoilers Toya Todoroki, the oldest Todoroki child thought to be dead. While some could argue that it was obvious, to me it's the presentation and the aftermath of how it affects the story that makes it work for me and many others. Needless to say, my question is, how can I effectively incorporate a plot twist into a story to maintain the audience's interest without making it too obvious or feeling like it comes out of nowhere? What are the key elements for a successful plot twist in your opinion? One of the things you're going to have to do is just give up on surprising everyone. That's not going to happen. If you do a good enough job planting the seeds and laying out the clues, your perceptive readers are going to figure it out. Um, And those who are especially savvy of various tropes or have even decent literature, uh, media literacy uh, are going to figure it out. And for them, there's the satisfaction of going, aha, I was right. In Dobby's case, you know, I remember watching it with Aaliyah and we're going, these, these points seem to connect. Is this going to be a thing? And then it was a thing. It was like, aha, we were right. Uh, what you can try to do is throw some folks off the scent with something that seems like a legitimate way to disprove it, but is easily worked around. In Dobby's case, you have the hair color, first and foremost. And, you know, the fact that he was assumed dead. That's kind of hard to come back from. But, you know, with his reveal comes the explanation of why those were misdirections. So when you're building your reveal, you know, maybe put in a couple misdirections. But as you do that, be prepared to or be mindful of what these are. And you don't want to cheapen the reveal. Like if it's built in such a way that 
it requires too much explanation over why this misdirection was a misdirection, then maybe you misdirected too hard. Another thing to consider is why you're doing this big reveal. Like in Dobby's case specifically, it was thematic. Like he is a stark contrast to Shoto and his personal arc. And he's also symbolic of all the sins that Endeavor had amassed up to that point. The reveal is cool, sure, but thematically he is intrinsic to the entire story around Endeavor and Shoto and their family and the greater themes of what it means to be a hero and the weight of public perception. It's not just, oh, hey, it was a Todoroki all along. That's almost inconsequential in comparison to what he does and how that plays into the greater themes of the story. So when you're setting up your big aha moment, really look at it and see if you're building it for just the aha or if it builds to the greater themes of your story. If that reveal builds what you're doing in a new and interesting direction, because then even if your misdirections up to this point were maybe a little flimsy, or maybe if you missed a seed planting somewhere, folks will forgive it because it is part of the greater whole. Mm. Also, it's like uh, if you, even if the reveal is kind of obvious to the audience, it's still interesting, you know? It's still yeah. something you can keep. It doesn't have to necessarily be like, Oh no, surprise, shock to everybody. You're never going to be able to do that. There's always someone who will be, uh, who will like see through it immediately. But even then, other people will be like, ah, I didn't see that coming at all, which is funny. <laughs> like, maybe don't think of it as being in a haunted house where you know someone's going to jump out and go boo. Think of it more as like being on a roller coaster. You're going up that ramp, you know, you're going to go over the edge, you know, that's coming. And even though you know full well it's going to happen, it's still going to be satisfying when you go down. That's how the folks who figure it out are going to feel. Mm -hmm. It's not so much that they aren't being surprised. It's they're satisfied that they put the pieces together. Right. Yep. Okay, here's a question from Axis. I noticed that in IDW Sonic, there hasn't been a single mention of Sonic 06 or any elements of its story. That is, until issue 64 came out and Soliana was name-dropped. And not only that, but in the 900th Adventure special, Sonic Blazing Cream briefly traveled to Tropical Jungle from Sonic 06. My question is, are elements from 06 now available to the comics? If that's the case, could elements from other games become available as well, like the Black Arms, Eggman Nega, Infinite, etc.? You are reading too much into that. Like, just because we don't necessarily name-drop oil ocean doesn't mean that sonic 2 is not available to us it's just it hadn't come up so the fact that there was two name drops within close succession to each other is completely coincidence this just in ian flynn confirmed sonic 2 not canon <laughs> direct all hate mail to crow at bite me dot com there we go <laughs> <laughs> Here's one from Batman 69 lol. How would a Dr. Eggman and Dr. Doom team up be like? What would they think of each other and how long would it last until the inevitable betrayal? Are we talking like classic hamtastic Dr. Doom or the more current? He's not really a bad guy because he's so brilliant and better than everyone else. Dr. Doom, which is just as insufferable. N no, uh, whichever the ham, the ham. The hammy one, the one that the one that people like, Ian. The if one we're talking about, like the Doom that toots as he pleases. Then, oh, that's gonna be a lot more fun. <laughs> the, the classic Doom. <laughs> Don't toot on the cacophony, conk. Doom toots as he pleases. <laughs> <laughs> I too toot as I please. Thank you. I, <laughs> uh, uh, if we're going like that that route, they might team up in the short term complimenting complimenting each other's genius and how genius they are together with, with their genius and their geniuses. And then the first foible, the first minor disagreement, it, the house of cards will fall. 
they will nitpick each other. They will go from bestest buds to worstest of enemies. It'll be a worse fallout than the Eggman Wily thing. They will immediately go nuclear on each other. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I figured it wouldn't last. Like, for no, It would fall apart in record time, though. Yeah, I was like, it would last for maybe a few minutes. That's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's one from CC. How would an interaction between Dr. Starline and Bill Platypus go down? One aspires to work alongside Eggman as an equal, and one is a rebellious underling who sabotages Eggman's control of Down Under, and can't even make the choice to quit his position lest the Legion explosives are activated. I can only imagine just how much they would end up hating each other. Oh, you could cut that tension with a knife. Because at first, Starline wouldn't know that Bill is a double agent. Because Bill puts on a good act. Bill's entire uh, motivation is to keep think is to mitigate the effect of his chapter. And that's a very fine line to walk. And so, you know, with the efforts of the Freedom Fighters, there's a degree of plausible deniability. Oh, they somehow got intel. Oh, you know, those pesky heroes, they always seem to turn things around. Curse them. Shake fist. And while Eggman would mostly buy into that for the long term, I think Starline would eventually see the pattern because he's a little more savvy of the meta contextual stuff here. And so he'd realize that Bill is just so curiously absent when he needs to be or makes that mistake one too many times in the heroes get away. This, this requires a bit more investigation and then he would play it with it. Like he would hold either the lives of the chapter in uh, peril or those of the freedom fighters or both. He would find a way to twist the knife on bill and make bill more effective as a leader. And that would force Bill's hand into eventually making his decision to, I don't know, openly rebel or possibly try to drop Starlight off a cliff. I don't know. But if if given the right opportunity, that would be a fantastic slow burn uh, subplot. <laughs> All right. Here's one from Chow Researcher. Why does current Sonic let villains go because he wants them to have freedom, but simply kills badniks who never had any freedom at all? To my understanding, many badniks are sentient, and some are even shown to fear death. Sonic has oil on his hands. Perhaps Sonic doesn't consider them alive because they lack free will? No idea. Killing robots is cool and fun, but I dislike hypocrisy. Well, here's the thing about I... uh, badniks. They have uh, sentient creatures inside of them that Sonic is trying to free, usually. Yeah. The, yeah. the badniks do not have sentience to the level of, like, gamma or the hard-boiled heavies or any of those. Most of those emotions and reactions are programmed responses because Eggman is weird. <laughs> but Sonic is not snuffing out mechanical life left, right, and center. No, no. Maybe you could make an argument for the Scrapniks, that they are sentient? Yeah, but those are all, like, uh, especially restored by Sigma. Yeah, yeah. Like, they, they have special coding in them to restore their functionality. Mm -hmm. And even then, you might argue that it's only, like, base level. But then we're getting into a much deeper, darker debate over what actually constitutes uh, sapience and sentience. And mm -hmm. uh, we're not doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Don't worry about the TMNT beating up random thugs. They're just robots. <laughs> secret robots or mutants as soon as you become a mutant you're no longer human so you're fair game i guess i think that's how that works weird here's one from chonky pancake my question is are you aware that there's a spotify playlist where the titles of all the songs in it write out the entirety of the sonic forces script take a look at it and then they give a spotify link and say that's it take care yeah, I saw that, and um... <laughs> I did not know this existed before we got this question. But that's pretty funny. <laughs> it is impressive the lengths someone has gone to to put together that playlist. I, f I forget how many days long it is, or something. It's obscene, but uh, <laughs> it's a fun little project. Yeah, yeah, that's it. that is pretty funny. <laughs> uh, I'm glad Operation Big Wave was something somebody used. Although I'm guessing that is two separate songs. I didn't actually look at it. 
All right, here's a question from Conga. Bumming this question from Jara. Does Sage eat the computer cookies that crop up when browsing the internet? How do they taste? Uh, like privacy. Initially, no. Initially, no, because she doesn't get the pun. But uh-huh. then she gets the pun. And so then she constructs cookies that will actually contain the data that is required to be tasty and delicious. <laughs> They still violate your privacy, though. Until Eggman puts them behind a firewall labeled cookie jar. Rude. And puts the server on top of the refrigerator. Rude. (laughs) She can fly, Ian. Father, I wish... Shut up. Father, I wish to have some cookies. No, you can't have any. You'll get fat. Like you. That's it. Go to your server. (laughs) We're really, 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 really stretching the meaning of these computer terms <laughs> it's almost like going back to the old reboot cartoon <laughs> yes put a firewall on your cookies that's not how that works again but okay i'll give it to you it's fine <laughs> that's you not how have sage just go alphanumeric <laughs> it's not how firewalls work <laughs> I don't care. He's a genius. I am can joking. I'm joking, Ian. I know. It's like a it's a sci-fi trope thing. It's yes, Sonic is not real. It's okay. <laughs> I just have a good chuckle every time the word firewall comes up. <laughs> Which proves you're not Knuckles. <laughs> I have a good chuckle often. You do listen to the show, right? All right. And here's one from well, this one's actually sponsored by Curly Quills. But it is from Louis GM270, and it's from uh, the September 2023 live stream. Uh, why Silver didn't go to Amy's birthday in The Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog? Well, he's from the future. He already knows who the culprit is. He'd spoil the ending. <laughs> you know what? You're right. <laughs> but would he know? Would it? Would, like- has, is this documented somewhere in his future? <laughs> And everyone's like, well, why didn't you warn us about the murder train aspect? Because what murder train? Oh, no. You know about the party, but you don't know about the train. Well, what happened with the train? We destroyed it. Oh, well, that, I guess that's why it wasn't re- recorded. <laughs> silver? That must be why it wasn't mentioned. I mean, it, it seemed like a big nothing. Oh, Silver. That where he got the date wrong and showed up like the next day. Really confused why nobody else was there. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> he got pulled back in time too late. I have to go back and stop the party trigger. (laughs) Uh, And then he's too late. Too late. Dreams of an absolution at Amy's party. (laughs) Oh, man. Now I'm sad that Silver wasn't there. Oh, oh well. Why wasn't Cream there, though? That's that's one that seems to come up a lot. Because Cream is like Amy's best friend. Yes. But... Yes, Vanilla, we're going to invite your daughter to a murder party. She doesn't have to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you're going to lie through omission to a Vanilla. No, 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 sir. It's a fake murder Absolutely party. Not. Vanilla knows what a fake murder is, right? You should be celebrating murder, fake or otherwise. Uh, what kind of degenerates are you? Uh, oh, degenerates. Oh, degenerates. All right. Well, I guess we'll take a break from being degenerates, and then we'll come back with more on the Bumblecast. Just kidding. We'll never take a break from being degenerate. We'll always be. (laughs) At least I will. We have an ad sponsored by patron Dominic the Raccoon. Hello, listeners. Are you interested in platformer characters experimenting with narratives? How about varied combat systems? or perhaps want to see more of the red guy that Sonic goes to the Olympics with, then let me introduce you to Mario RPG Central, a fan-made Discord server. Dedicated to the surprising amount of Mario-themed RPGs released over the years, this community bolsters discussion channels, has custom emotes, and enjoys occasional events. With a moderation team that seeks to maintain a pleasant atmosphere, it's a chance to make new friends as well. So please consider joining the server, or follow them at Mario RPG Central on Twitter, with the links in the episode description below. We're back, and we get a question from Dev. I know Ian can't answer anything about the future of Sonic, but I'd assume he can answer this. By the time you get to this question, Frontiers Update 3 might already be out. 
But with the third update, Superstars, and whatever else you know about the future of the franchise, how hype are you personally to have us see what's in store for the future development of the characters and lore of the series based on what you know? Ah, uh, cautiously optimistic, because you never know how folks are going to respond. But there is, at least at this point, there is a lot of setup and pre-planning that should be seeing the light of day stuff that will be culminating in the next little while. And that'll be satisfying to just finally have those done and consumable. And then we'll see how everyone is, how everyone receives it. You never know. It's true. You never, you never know. You never know what's going to be another big oof moment. <laughs> <laughs> like there's one thing in particular, I am very much waiting to see what the response is. And I'm not going to go any further than that because I don't want to color any expectations, but it's, it will be fascinating to see what the consensus boils down to be. If there even is one. Mm. 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 All right. Here's one from dice. Enerjack is back, but due to the plot Genesis wave, he cannot take over Knuckles's mind. Instead, he has to make a devil's deal with IDW characters in order to get a body who takes the deal for power with his temptation. Please include our dear Dr. Starline in his final moments, if possible. Oh, Starline absolutely would go for the power trip. Unlimited power. In, assuming that he can control it. Um, I wonder what an interject-styled Starline would look like. Pretty badass, could, probably. In a few directions with that. Like, would you keep, would you keep like, the vest and the the kind of debonair look or would you lean more into the egyptian faux egyptian style how would that go i don't know could be neat though is he is, 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 uh, is it like also... star jack inner line that... <laughs> star jack actually sounds kind of cool star jack does it's one of those cool. things that sounds goofy at first but the more you say it it's like yeah all right <laughs> star jack <laughs> uh surge would absolutely accept the bargain because more power to destroy your enemies. Absolutely. And having a faux Egyptian thunder God surge would be freaking amazing. Inner surge. Inner surge. Absolutely. Or surge Jack, but I don't know. Inner surge yeah, goes inner along surge. with the, with the, with the, the electricity theme. Mm -hmm. So, but of the two, I think Surge would clue in that she's being used by the malevolent spirit. Even It's debatable on how much Interjack was an individual or just kind of like a presence. Mm -hmm. um, from what I remember, I didn't really intend for it to be like an actual conscious force taking over, more just kind of like a general sense of evil kind of brings out your worst traits. So it's not so much Interjack controlling you it's interject is bringing out the worst in you um but still i would imagine surge would eventually realize that it's playing with her head it's not she's not fully in control and once that clicks she's going to reject it because there's no way she's allowing anyone to control her ever again um starline starline's going to do something stupid that ends up getting himself blown up because he's not going to let go of the power he's going to assume he can't control it that it's not controlling him, that he is in full control. What are you talking about? No, he's absolutely got a handle on this. Oopsie. And something happens. Mm -hmm. What about Kit? Maybe. I don't know if he could handle the power, to be perfectly honest. But would he try? Would he agree? Maybe. Maybe. But then I worry he'd just kind of like pop like a water balloon. And I don't want that for the poor sad boy. <laughs> Kit's been through enough. Uh, I suppose. I suppose. Mm -hmm. Would Clutch do it? I don't know if Clutch would do it. I think Clutch might see through it. Yeah, I think he would be tempted, but I think he's too savvy to fall for it. Yeah. Yeah, he's too smart. Like, he uh, he appreciates the power, and he wouldn't go... He wouldn't fall for it. He would find some other way, maybe, to utilize it, to control it or harness it, but he wouldn't expose himself to it. I think he's too smart for that. Mm -hmm. And Rough and Tumble would just end up arguing over who would make the better Enerjack, so neither <laughs> of them would get it. Because <laughs> Enerjack would be like, fine, I'm out of here. 
Neither of you are Tell worthy. Tell in a rough. No, tumble jack. In a rough, tumble jack. In a rough, tumble jack. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> and inner jack just leaves. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know who would actually, it would actually work on? And I kind of hate to say this, but Zavok could pull it off. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. if you go with whole horned demon king, inner jack, Nervok? Zener Zenervok. Yeah, it has to start yeah, with the Z. It has to start it with does, the Z. So it could be either Zenerjack or Zenervok. Yeah. Zenervok, Zenervok, I like that. And just like full on, you know, crazy demon king type thing. Yeah. He'd actually be terrifying. <laughs> hashtag hashtag Zavok sweep. All right, here's a question from Dove. After a harsh battle and a huge explosion, a surgeon kid are separated. Cream comes along and finds a wounded kid and decides to take the little drip home to take care of him. Almost a full year passes before Surge finally finds the little, little guy. How does Kit handle living with Cream and Vanilla? How do they handle living with Kit? What's the fallout when Surge takes him back? This is more or less a fanfic plot. This isn't kind of an open-ended question. This is this is kind of on fan idea territory. Um, the only reason I'm not immediately throwing it out the window is because the scope of it is much too large for anything that I think we could actually do. Like, I don't foresee us ever getting a chance to do a subplot that would do this idea full justice. So mm -hmm. I'm letting this one slide, Dove, but I got my <laughs> eye on you. Dove is apologizing. They didn't mean it like that. <laughs> yeah, of course. That's what they always say once they get cut. <laughs> But I think you have an opportunity for something either incredibly wholesome or incredibly tragic, because if there's going to be any household that can kind of help Kit get over his damage, it would be the rabbit household. And it would be slow going, very frustrating work, but vanilla and cream are the compassionate and nurturing types that could see it through to the end and get Kit to open up and find some self worth self-reliance and to not be a hundred percent dependent on somebody else's whims mm -hmm. so that when surge comes back either a kit his is healed and doesn't necessarily need her and is perfectly fine with his more comfortable and wholesome life leaving surge to just rage on her own mm -hmm. b he is so deeply ingrained that there is no fully fixing that trauma and he full on relapses and abandons all the good that he just had or see he is better. Now he is his own person. And so he makes the conscious choice to abandon all the good that he just found and go along with surge because he likes that it's his choice. It's a wrong one, but it's his choice to make <laughs> or D vanilla and cream just to ad adopt surge too. <laughs> <laughs> there you go they can fix her here's one from emil c what if sonic met puss in boots and death himself uh he and puss would have a grand old time defeating giants and going on rollicking adventures and having guitar solos and just living it up <laughs> uh when death comes sonic would actually beat him and mockingly whistle his little tune back at him yeah, it would be freaking gorgeous to behold. <laughs> God, I can just imagine the fight scene. <laughs> uh, Sonic's confirmed immortal, which is true. I mean, you can have death kind of salty that, you know, Sonic already cheated once with the Chaos Emeralds and that princess. And, you know, you didn't come to pick me up, so you're too slow. And then fight, 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 and good times had. <laughs> All righty, well... Sonic cheats death, it's true, all the time. He has too many extra lives. Someone needs to fix that. Mm. Here's one from Fang. I'm asking this question for my friend MC from the Tales Channel Discord. This question is about the Encyclopedia. He'd like to know if we'll ever get a reprint of the Encyclopedia itself with fixes to the numerous errors and the inclusion of Frontiers and the Superstars. No idea. That's not up to me. Why not? Aren't you King Sega? <laughs> Don't you also run uh, Dark Horse? You do both, right? Right? Oh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Right? Right? Here's one from Geo Knuckles. 
if Sonic and Knuckles were in My Hero Academia, the two forming two teams, Team Sonic and Team Knuckles, which UA students would join Team Sonic and Team Knuckles? Okay, we're going to just stick with Class 1A, because if we go all through all of UA, we're going to be here forever. This is already kind of a big ask. But uh, let's see. Pull up a list, because there's no way I'm remembering all of them off the top of my head. Uh, let's see. I am a... I don't know. Maybe S- Team Sonic, just for the presentation aspect. Uh... Mina, absolutely, Team Knuckles. Uh, Froki? Oh, that's a tough one, because she would want to make sure either Sonic or Knuckles stayed on task. She's an excellent leader, very grounded, extremely versatile. Uh, maybe Team Sonic. Uh, Eid is definitely Team Sonic. That, Not even a question. Uh, Uraraka will go Team Knuckles. Teach her how to glide punch things along the way. <laughs> Ojiro, I don't know, his focus on martial arts I think would speak more to Team Knuckles. Uh, Kaminari, I think he's more up to Sonic style. Uh, Kirishima, uh, come on, that's Team Knuckles all the way right there. That's that's an up for a debate, I'm sorry. Koda, I think definitely Team Sonic. Sonic would be the type to encourage him to say, you know, yeah, your power is not really an offensive powerhouse, but it's still a special thing, and it's cool. You are cool for who you are. Sato, he's kind of a brawler. We'll go Team Knuckles on that one. Uh, Shoji, I think Sonic Knuckles would be fighting over who got him, because Knuckles is like, look at all his fists. He can totally punch like six times faster than me. My team. Sonic's like, no, he's super cool. I dig the fact that he's, you know, living his own way. My team. I don't know. Uh, Jiro... Knuckles might be too loud for her taste, so Team Sonic. Uh, Zero. God, he's so forgettable. I'm sorry. He's just, he's kind of there. He rounds things out. Uh, We'll go Team Sonic, because I feel like Sonic's lacking. Uh, Tokoyami. Tokoyami's going to be more inclined to go with Knuckles' more serious, immediate nature. Uh, Shoto. Shoto, 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 Shoto pass i don't know where he would go <laughs> uh toru hilariously for everyone forgets that she's there i know it's an invisibility joke it's cheap whatever bakugo ah uh, he's more inclined for knuckles's temperament but he might be annoyed enough with sonic that he wants to show him up i don't know which way he would go uh, midoriya midoriya is going to be like petrified with choice because he wants to get into all the deep echidna lore, but he wants to understand how Sonic works. So he can't decide which one to go with and train under. Uh, Mineta, he can join Starline under the rock and Momo. Momo is so practically minded. Kind of feel like bad giving both the tactical minded folks to Sonic. So we'll put her with Knuckles. All right. Is that it? (laughs) That's all we're doing. All right. Let's move on to our next question from Gideon Wells. In one of last month's podcasts, you mentioned wanting to avoid conflating fan continuations with your plans for Lost Hedgehog Tales. And this reminded me of an author admitting he accidentally forgot a Disney movie original character wasn't in the source material when intending to pull from the original story. With all the different projects and different brands, where where you accidentally conflated different versions of the brand on a project? If that is too behind the curtain for you to answer, was there instead a time it almost happened and you happily caught it in time? Not that I can think of. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm well versed enough in Sonic that I can nine times out of ten spot where you know each version was and what's distinct to them. Um, okay, you know, you know what? There is one I think. Maybe maybe this qualifies for what you're asking. Uh, in the Bad Guys miniseries, I was trying to come up with a name for the prison, and I think I settled on Everhold, and that got flagged because it was a Sad AM reference. And I'm like, it was really. Oops. And sure enough, it was. And it's like, well, maybe that's where I got the name from, you know, digging in my subconscious. But <laughs> otherwise, I try, I try to be extremely careful about that stuff. Mm. So if it's if I have oopsied, then oops. But I can't think of anything like really specific. Ah, so you did work on Sat AM. You're the one who got it canceled, just like Sonic Underground. 
<sighs> Kyle, there will be at least one person who believes you. Stop that. <laughs> I don't care that you were like five years old when the show came out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's true. I swear. It's true. Goomba Broadcast has a question. What would you say are the defining traits that separate the Great Battle Cuckoo from Eggman? I've been wondering this, as while one uses bird soldiers with the other using bird-powered robots, they're both tyrants who want to use the Chaos Emeralds for empirical, empirical conquest. So, if given the opportunity, how would you make the old Battle Lord more distinct? I think the key qualifier is the Battle Lord's troops are actually loyal to him. Like, it's a cult of personality. They believe in his cause. They believe in what they're part of. They are serving him and the M the Armada willingly. Whereas Eggman's forces are built to obey him. Mm -hmm. There is no choice, really. I know somebody's going to say, but what about no, no, in general? The Badniks are built to serve him, and that's it. That's the full scope of their functionality and thought process. So that, I think, is the key distinction. Egg Eggman has very, very few willing followers, and the Battle Lord has an entire armada. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense to me. Here's a question from Hero Squad. Did Cortez the Badger's sword have a name? It did, but for the life of me, I can't remember. And that stinks, because I did a ton of freaking research. There was going to be this whole subplot, and there was going to be a whole bunch of named swords, and there was, like, a thinking behind each and every one of them, and... It's in some file somewhere. Oh, darn. We got this question from Ichigo Laser. This might be bordering on rule of cool territory, but how much of the metal virus touching you would it take to get infected? What if flies or other insects landed on the metal virus and then landed on Tails, Amy, or even Eggman? Would they get infected? Yep. What, what? That whole sequence early on, uh, Flicky was asleep in a tree that was infected, and the infection in the tree seeped into the bird, and the bird flew into the city and just started off the pandemic so yeah all it takes is a touch what what if you breathe air particles that have been infected by the metal virus what then uh the air cannot be infected oh why not can water be because i said affected can, can, no is is the, the so metal virus is not water soluble does it just like float in water or does it just like what does it do <sighs> I don't know. It's gone now. Who cares? Stop <laughs> putting me to the fans. <laughs> what about the uh, the little microbes in uh, in the air? The things that are technically what alive. What about your face, Kyle? What about you shutting your face? Huh? My, my, huh? my face. What about could, it? My face could very easily be infected by the metal virus, much like other people's <laughs> faces were. <laughs> If it's if it's truly virus sized, then it could infect bacteria, and then the bacteria <laughs> gets on somebody, and all of it got sucked out by Super Silver's TK and beamed into the sun, so we don't have to think about it anymore. Cool, cool. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. You know that. Oh, I know you are. I'm just giving you the same hard time that anyone else would give you on this subject. Honestly, <laughs> no. <laughs> Others would be far more harsh. Or worse. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm, I'm I'm going easy on you comparatively. Uh, <laughs> I'm being told that you need to answer why the gloves transmit it. Because if it did, if they don't affect, it, if the if metal virus doesn't affect inorganic matter, then why do their gloves? Because they're very oily, that's why. Why does it get into their gloves? <laughs> or maybe they're all organic they never gloves. never off, it's just... They never take their gloves off. They're just seeping with bodily fluids from their hands. That's why. Okay? That's disgusting. Happy now? Is that what you want to hear? No. Is this where you want the conversation to go? Huh? Uh, huh? Is this what you want? Are you not entertained? I'm not entertained, Ian. I'm horrified. This isn't what I wanted. Uh, answer that, you hack fraud. Anyway, I, we, I think we need a shower, but we still have more questions. <laughs> Here's one from Icy. Honk, honk, it's clown time! Which of the Sonic cast is most scared of clowns? Hopefully there shall be no floating involved. <laughs> I feel like the best options are the comedy routes, so like Knuckles and Shadow. Like, Knuckles just doesn't like him. It's creepy. I mean, he'll put on a brave face around him, but if one gets too close, he's going to punch him. 
I figured it would be kind of ironic Shadow. if Bell was afraid of clowns. <laughs> yeah, all right. I get behind that. And Shadow just like is terrified of them, but he doesn't show it. Well, no. Got bad memories. Maria's one birthday party that he got to experience. Yeah. Hey, killed. <laughs> take it away, take it away, take it away, take it away. <laughs> oh, boy. Shadow, come out of the capsule. You're missing all the cake and ice cream. Don't care. Make it go away. <laughs> Do not want. Do not want. So just them? No one else? I don't think of anyone being funnier. Well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. It does have to be funny. Like, if it's a, t- it's a true terrifying... If they're truly terrified of clowns, then it's not funny anymore. I could see maybe Marine. Except for... Those are two big fears. Ghosts and clowns. Except for Belle. Belle is funny because, you know, she's, like, clown-ish. But she's afraid of clowns. It's weird. All right. Here's one from JR Unbound. My brother wants to know, to know what would the ideal date between Mario and Sonic be? <laughs> I feel like we've done this, but it was either a while ago or I, I don't remember, but yeah. And I don't know if I have a good answer because I don't know what the ideal date for Mario would be. Well, Cake. Mario would probably be <laughs> that comes at the end of the date after dinner because <laughs> it's a dessert. True. I suppose. Uh, dinner like is a very dinner is chili mac you know they they'd learn how to combine their two favorites oh, no 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 no, no. <laughs> see you know, mario is a very salt of the earth type of guy he will rise to the occasion he will happily adventure for the benefit of others but i feel like for something personal he would prefer to be kind of low-key and relaxed whereas sonic doesn't do that so i don't know if they're even compatible <laughs> They're compatible on the GameCube, at least. Compatible <laughs> with GameCube. That was the first time they were both compatible. The same thing. Like a big pizza pie. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> and that's all the time we have for this Bumblecast. Thank you to everyone over at patreon.com slash Bumblecast and our YouTube members from the live stream and our subscribers for supporting the show. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and we will see you next time on the Bumblecast. Well, we're just going to leave it to that. You've been listening to The Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T-Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at BumbleKing.com and KNGI.org. Let's get this party rolling because I've got to okay. immediately work on an assignment due tomorrow morning. Well then, all right, let's get let's get going. Which I was informed of an hour ago. <laughs> Great. And uh, Andrew D, if you're listening, uh, I said I'd get things done by the end of the week. It ain't happening now. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. Anyway, all right. So let's party.